We have to be globally competitive. We have to be for free and open markets. But what do we do when other countries seek an artificial advantage through state policies that uh, penalize American workers, not because we don't produce quality products at competitive prices. They're not, their steel's not even as good as ours. Correct. Some countries, China's an example, favor uh, higher than would otherwise be the natural case growth because they're concerned about uh, political instability, absorbing people coming in off the uh, agricultural sector. And it's hollowed out steel and other parts of the American manufacturing economy. And we're, when they're doing that because of illegal subsidies, and things that have nothing to do with free market competition, we have to do something about that. It's just and so you, you can be a free marketer and yet when, and say when other countries cheat and seek an artificial advantage, we have to stand up and not allow so that. So is this the right move the or two is this blunt, another way a, to do it? We need to do it surgically. So we? Becky, I think it's too soon to say. It depends. This will affect things at the margins. The question is whether it touches off a broader trade war, number one, and number two, whether it leads to the collapse of the global trading system. Both of those things would be bad. Uh, we were talking before we came on air. The big question is intellectual property theft. Sure. If our country is moving toward the more highly innovative parts of the global economy, we invest in R&D, coming up with new cures, uh, processes, products, and those are stolen from us, that's a big problem. And that decision will be made later this year. The, the estimates are we may lose more than $200 billion annually to our economy because of intellectual property theft. We've got to do something about that. Otherwise, we will not have a place in the global economy any longer. Look, Ian Shepardson even raises the point, if, if you're going to do this if, this, if there's a justification for doing it with steel and aluminum, why don't we do it with clothing? Why don't we do it with, with furniture? Why don't we do it with electronics? Because these are all areas where you have seen domestic production drop even more rapidly since 2001 when China went into the WTO. So the question is whether those industries have uh, shrunk because of natural competitive forces, lower wages in other countries, you know, things of that nature, where they have a comparative advantage, or whether those industries have shrunk artificially because of, of predatory policies but you imposed can, by other you, countries. You could say the same thing with the steel industry. Is it because of automation or is it because of these, uh, these dumping policies from other countries? Probably some of both, and it depends upon which part of the steel uh, sector you're talking about. Uh, but there's no question, Ch China continues to add capacity even though there's a global glut Do in many add, parts of the steel it, Is it employees? Uh, that they, there's a piece in the journal which depressed me. It, it's a, a, the, one of the editorials about this, a big steel producer in, in Vienna, in Austria. It used to have 1,000 employees to make 500,000 tons of steel. It now has 14 employees because of automation. And the CEO of that steel firm said, we have to forget about steel as a core employer and that its automation has made it so that it's never coming back. So is this an anachronistic view, an archaic view that, that Trump, that we have, that we can bring these jobs back? Or? There has been a capital substitution in steel, as there have been in many industries, where technology and machines have replaced people. You can see that in Becky's home part of our state. No longer are guys you know, covered with soot standing out by the blast furnaces. Very often they're in quality control you know, areas monitoring terminals. So some of that, Joe, has taken place naturally, but some has taken place artificially as well. Can, it, are, can, can I mention one last thing? Because yeah. this, is, this was part of the, the steel announcement. There's an, another area in which steps like this might be justifiable, and that's on grounds of national security. You do, do need to retain some capacity in critical key industries so that in times of conflict, you're not you're know, vulnerable to a disruption of your supply chain. We, and that was part of the justification is for it, these tariffs. We'd need to look at the data to determine whether that was legit it, or whether that was just an excuse. Is it a mistake for the U.S. to throw its weight around as the biggest economy? Because when Trump says we can win trade wars, I see what he means because everybody needs to trade with us. And if they don't like it, they're going to, you know, if we slap tariffs on, on cars coming from out of this country, I mean, if they do retaliate against this initial steel thing and we do something like that. I mean, I know everybody's going to lose, but I think they lose more than we lose. Don't, don't. If, if you've got a global competition, which is what we have and what we should have, you have to have some referees and some rules, right? If there are no rules whatsoever and people can just cheat you know, rampantly, things break down and you do get trade so wars. Where are you on? So, what, 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 so should we be doing this or not? I think it's a good thing we're standing up and saying, look, we're not going to be patsies anymore. We believe in global trade. We don't want protectionism. That doesn't work. Right. 
But when other countries actually have a policy of right. going after U.S. industries and workers in certain sectors. And you're not running for anything right now, are you? You, you, used, to be a, you used to be a governor, Senator. <laughs> my, but wife would, my wife wouldn't let me come home, you're just Joe, doing this, running for You're just office. doing this because this is what, how you... It's, f- it's good policy. I mean, it's just, you watch the media or the newspaper, look, and this is like the biggest folly in the world. That you have, look, we have agriculture in my state. We have Cummins Engine in my state. Eli Lilly, these are globally competitive sectors. So you have to compete. You can't be a protectionist. But when we're being penalized by other countries seeking an artificial advantage, our, our country has to do something so the, about it. Hence, you see the big discussion in the White House between Cohn and Navarro. And as usual, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, very Senator, much, Governor, Senator. What, what, what's first? Governor or Senator? Uh, with Congress's job approval rating at 12%. I'll take uh, governor, governor any day of the week. <laughs> Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.